Il FAIE e Villa Panza continuano la progettazione di, di mostre temporanee, quest'anno eh, focalizzato su uno dei temi eh, profondamente legati al, al luogo, all'architettura stessa, alla filosofia eh, della collezione che è il tema della natura. Il tema della natura quindi è un tema profondamente legato alla storia di questo luogo e alla collezione eh, di Giuseppe Panza e abbiamo voluto focalizzare eh, proprio la ricerca di due grandi maestri dell'arte internazionale, quindi Roxy Payne e Meg Wester, eh, che hanno eh, accettato il nostro invito e hanno deciso di realizzare ben 28 installazioni che si trovano eh, lungo diciamo così, le sale, le stanze, le architetture e anche gli spazi esterni della villa in un dialogo a volte simbiotico, a volte quasi provocatorio con gli spazi stessi. Sono eh, installazioni circoscrivibili tra la, la metà degli anni 80 e il 2015 eh, e recuperano proprio il linguaggio di questi due grandi maestri. Il titolo della mostra è Natura Naturans ed è un'espressione mutuata da Spinoza, dal filosofo spinoziano, che, con, che, che, che ragiona, quindi che concentra le sue eh, espressioni su un ciclo della natura che continua a generare vita. Ecco, questi due maestri in realtà si concentrano proprio sulla relazione no, tra il cosmo e la natura e producono all'interno eh, di questa villa 28 installazioni eh, compiute e realizzate con chiaramente linguaggi estremamente diversi. The mushroom this represents a field, a field of potential. Uh, it's about the potential of the hallucinogenic qualities of this mushroom to affect the human brain. Um, it's a what I like to call a psychedelic banality because it's using the elements of what causes the psychedelic event uh, but without any sense of exaggerated color or form it's using only restricting myself to only the actual physical attributes of this species um, to create an analogy for the, the hallucinogenic trip. So it's a poetry of intensive thought and meditation and uh, repetition. It's a poetry of being becoming uh, whatever species I'm working with, becoming um, the mushroom, becoming the mind of the mushroom. Well, I mean, the mushroom is the, the, the it's the, the metaphor for the, uh, uh, of altered thought, of changing consciousness, of, uh, Um, the, the, the catalyst to remove oneself from habitual thinking um, and trying to, trying to create that with the most uh, restraint possible and um, with a very sense of, um, with a sense of, of limitation in the creation, uh, but which refers to 
the unbounded um, thinking that may be possible with uh, with a hallucinogenic mushroom. This exhibition is, um, I think it's, it's very interesting to have these works in, uh, in a historic place, in a place where, uh, that has uh, such a particular architecture of a particular time and to have these works transposed into this environment is um, gives them a kind of a new meaning or a new um, understanding. Because they're symbols and they're made of material and I want people to see the material and the symbol and the careful making of the material and the careful form making of the material. The poetry. It's hard for me to describe that. It's sort of for everyone else to describe that. It's hard for me to uh, say words like that because it's in the work. It's for you to take the poetry from the work and your body. I can't interpret it for you. I'm not a, if I was, I would be a writer. I'm not a writer. The sand bed was the first bed that was ever made. It was made in 1982, and it was meant as a counterfoil for nuclear war. And then the moss bed was first made in 1987, 86, 87, in a group of works that were similar to a couple of the pieces here in a long space. So that's the first, that's similar to the first moss bed. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And because he, Camponza bought some of these works early, very early for me. And so it was an amazing delight to see the place that he bought these pieces for. And the uh, Anna and Erica and all the staff are just magnificent people. It's beautiful. The place is beautiful. They're, they're, they're both concrete or Minimal, they're concrete when I mean, I say, it's formal. They're formal works, but there's some romanticism within it. And that's very much what the place is. It's very formal, but it's very romantic at the same time. It's a, it's a work for growing plants indoors with solar power. We have solar panels out in the, uh, driveway all set up and then we have these lights which uh, will eventually be higher on, on top of and it's a beautiful mix of plants some vegetables some ground covers some herbs he did a beautiful job Giorgio and uh, it means a lot to me uh, the, all these plants and the whole system. Not that I think we shouldn't be growing outdoors, but I think it demonstrates the extreme importance of solar energy because it, using solar everywhere, will save the planet, will save the global warming. And that's what we have to do as a species now, everywhere. And, uh, it's cheap enough. We've got cars that are, are electric. We've got to uh, special batteries. It's going to work, but we, it's got to be everywhere. This is about making the sun everywhere. This piece is about caring for the earth, caring for the planet, and caring for people, and caring for beauty and caring for nature. That's what this piece is about.